Happy Sunday, Lotus Buds. First time using Frost Form. So I want to try a dust stencil. So the regular Frost Form and the stencil Frost Form are not the same size. This Frost Form stencil is slightly smaller. Not by much, but slightly. And that slightly will make a big difference. You'll see, especially when you put these together. See that little edge? That's the difference. You don't think it's much, but apparently it helps. So we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. I cut my board so it's a little smaller. And you know how much I hate the fact that I have to trim some of this off. But probably not by much. Ooh. Okay. So my problem was I was afraid that I'd have to take too much out. Not really much. I'm happy now. That's minuscule. I guess the shrinkage that happens in the pan. I had this in the freezer for a couple of days. And I already tell you, take off these edges. I don't really care. But yeah, I'm really happy that it's not a lot of cake. Because I was afraid that I'd be jipping customers out of cake. So this makes me happy. This is like literally just crumbs. Which I can probably use on a cookie. Or even in the middle and toss it into like... Look at that. Fine, thin. Alright, alright. Alright, frost form. I'm going to see if it does the same for the 8 inch. And then they'll have my complete endorsement. Because I was really afraid. I actually made a video because when I first got it and I took the measurements. It looked like it was going to take a lot of cake off. But shrinkage from the pan says that it didn't. This is all I had to shave off. That makes me happy. It's not very much. So in the video it says that we should put some frosting down onto this before we put the liner. And I squish it because I want it nice and flat and then I realign. Looks good. Then we put some more. Then we put our cardboard if you're using one. I am using one. I'm trying to get it into that circle as best I can. Everything's good. And then on top of this, you're going to put more frosting. This I put a little more generous because I want the cake to really adhere to it. Good. First layer goes down. Center it as best you can. Press it firmly. And keep centering this. This is content cake, so I don't really want a lot of frosting in the middle. In fact, I can help push some out on this side for my crumb coat.
Now, if I had filling, I'd be doing a dam, but I don't. So we are going to keep going till we get to the top. Okay, so I got the three layers done. I want a little more height. So I have an eight inch here. And I wanted to show you. With the shrinkage from the cake, this particular cake needed nothing cut off. The whole thing just sits right over it. So, that's pretty great. Nothing to cut. It's already shrunk itself. So, I can use these for cakes if you sell them. My concern was, oh my God, how are we going to sell cake if we're taking out so much from it? So, cross form, you've got a fan, you've got a fan, you've got a fan. You've got a fan. I need another six inch. Top it off. So, this is the height that I want. And you can see it's perfectly leveled. So, now we're going to crumb coat. Should I say in the video that you want to heat up the American buttercream just a little bit so that it's nice and easy and spreadable. Put it in the refrigerator for 30 minutes or the freezer for 15 and then you can put it into the former and do the whole frosting pour. But you want to crumb coat because you're using buttercream. If it was ganache, you don't have to crumb coat. Just doing a rough crumb coat. This is why a turntable is invaluable. Make sure you go all around, clean up as much as you can, because you really want this thin. And because it's a crumb coat, you can scrape all you want. And then you save that buttercream frosting when you're crumb coating something else because it won't matter that there's crumbs in it because it's just a crumb coat frosting or if you're making like cake pops because nothing goes to waste Because it's a chrome coat, you can be as indelicate as you like. Okay. Now we're going to make sure we're centered again. We're going to pop this in the freezer for 15 minutes. Centered on the board, centered on the disc. Okay, freezer time. Okay, it's been 15 minutes out of the freezer. Now, it does say in the tutorial to use dowel rods once you're about to use your former. So, I want to use their stencil. I love that it wraps around the whole thing. Please make every single design in the world so that we can buy more of these. Because so far, apparently, there's only like three or six or ten. Make millions, millions, please. Thank you. So, I'm going to... I believe you first put this around the cake and you want to make sure it's sitting on top 
and you want this bare end on the outside. So we're gonna do like so. And that clips in. The only thing is, if it's a six inch, it doesn't really clip. But I'm gonna clip it. We're gonna trust the process. And then we're gonna put our liner. Same thing. And we're going to clip this. Now, I want them sitting on the board. I think it would have been helpful if I would got this. That's the beauty. You can make a mistake and still keep moving forward. Go with this. I'm actually going to wrap it really tight until I get that piece on it. I like that it bends and mushes. Centered. It's moving around. Let's get all the kinks out for you so you don't have to go through this. And then squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. In. Push. this down this is a pretty tight seal we're gonna pause for typical difficulties okay I had to remove this liner because if you put both together it does not fit and it is pretty hard once you start going down to get this back up but at least now I know that that works with only one this is not simple. Well, it's simple, but not easy. I do love that I will be able to do this design throughout the whole thing so I have to do panels. But we are going to see how to do this. On here. Okay. This is what I wanted to do. I'm gonna get it tight around the bottom. And I want to make sure I'm using the right size because this seems pretty big. Yep, says so six inch, but it's wrapping around to the point where it can't. See the tab? That's for after. Once I get it into here. So, we'll put this down there, put this here, make sure our cake is centered. Center, center, center. Always make sure center on the board, and then center on the disc. Because that will affect how much frosting is on each side. Okay. Now comes the magic of pulling this up. rid of that and now I can release this to its proper size 
and release this to its proper size, which is away from the cake. But what I want to do is I want to clean this off because I don't want all this residue on my cake. I think all this bright light is affecting the buttercream, even though it was in the freezer for 15 minutes. So I would suggest maybe putting it in longer. So for me, my thing would be, this wouldn't be good for a actual production business because you have to go through all these steps and try and make sure all these pieces are happening while you're trying to do, you know, lines of cake. It's too time consuming. This is more your at-home baker who doesn't have time to use the disc or who can't get straight corners, straight edges, really clean and flat surfaces. Or if you're doing, you know, one or two cakes, your home business a week or a day, you can spend a day doing a whole cake, then yeah, this is this will work really great. But the stencil, I think, will be phenomenal because I'll be able to wrap it around once and do my cakes even without the cross form. But I'm going to wash this and get right back to you. Okay, I cleaned them off. I scraped a little bit off of the sides and then I put my dowel rods. I know it says two, but I use four because I want even spaces between. As I start filling, I can start removing on opposite sides. But I think four might be better because especially as a novice, I want to make sure that all the sides get filled. So it only leaves a very small gap, which I like, which because I was concerned about having too much frosting. Now I did put this in the microwave on 10 second burts just to try and get it a little bit softer. And let's see what happens. So, because I put it on pause a little bit hard, I'm gonna put this in for 10 more seconds. Okay, I did 10 second burts, 30 seconds, just to get it the consistency I want. And I like that I can shove the tip down and let's start squeezing. Ooh. I want you to see, see how easily it's filling up. Once I get four corners done, I'm going to remove two dowels. You want to make sure it goes all the way to the bottom. See how it starts coming up to the top? I like that. First dowel out, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Opposite dowel out, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Getting this dowel out, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Final dowel I'm gonna pull out. Squeeze, squeeze. Oh. Because I'm going to make sure. worried about right there I'm going to take a little bit I'm 
Okay. I want to try and squeeze a little more down there. a little more frosting in the bag in the freezer for 10 second burps so the beauty of this is you can always go back that just make sure that you have enough down there Gap. Anything extra you can always pull out. And I like that because this has that liner in it, I can see all the way to the bottom that everywhere has frosting. Okay. And then the excess, I can smooth out and take off. Because I don't need seven inches high of frosting on the top. Take that six, so about six and a half. So I'm going to start removing some frosting. how much I want on the top. I'm going to take, I want the edges nice and full. So I'm pushing some out towards the edge and then smoothing out the middle. I really got to get one of those smaller scrapers that you can use. I'm going to bang this some more. I want everything settled at the bottom. I'll make sure that everything has frosting. Looks good. Do one more against the top. Paint some of that off. And once I sit in the freezer. For half an hour I think I'm gonna let this one sit yeah in the freezer for half an hour should be 15 minutes but I'm gonna do a whole half an hour because I find Crisco because I'm doing just content cake this is Crisco not butter and the crumb coat took a little longer to set and was soft I'm gonna give this a little more time and then I'll show you what it looks like after half an hour okay it's been about 45 minutes. I gave it a little extra time. Now we'll see 
what happens. Trust the turntable here. Went to a smaller non-stick. And I'm just going to run some hot water. So, there we go. You can boil some water and dip it into that. But my fork is hot water pretty hot. So I do that. And let's unveil. Unveiling. Slowly peeling. So you see I can see a gap. Another one there. And we're going to fill those in. So we're not going to take this one off. So let's fill those in. And that is where the dowel was. So, as you can tell, first try made some errors but that's okay because in life you can always fix a mistake every day that you're alive is another chance to fix a mistake so don't be afraid to make mistakes I want to make sure we push 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 it in there Okay. Because it's cold, it's really taking nicely. And I go all the way to the top. That way, when I go to fix the top, there's a nice flat edge. Same thing if I was doing buttercream. And I'm going to just go into that fold where it meets. And some more. Okay. And then we take just the scraper. go around. I'm going to peel where the match is because I want to get that a little extra out. Just like with regular stenciling. And make sure you got all the excess out. Okay.
I say this all the time. Dessert is not for the faint of heart. Especially dessert decorating. Let's see. Piece that look choppy. A little bit of choppiness here. Fill it in and scrape. A little choppy there, a little choppy here. And I'm pushing off in that it becomes smooth. A little bit of holes. Fill in those holes. And scrape some more. much smooth surface as possible. You want it nice and flat against it. Okay. Now, we're going to try coloring. So, I had some Cape Craft Spray. I want to see how well these work. Because I don't want everything just encased it with silver and gold, I am going to see if I can find a box to sit it in so I can do this properly. So, a while back, I bought one of those, oh, in case boxes so you can do your pictures and all that stuff. I found it to be not bright enough. So now it's just my coloring box. I wonder, am I squeezing too hard? Am I shaking it too much? Because it's pooling. We're gonna take care of that. See, you're learning with me. This one. Let me do that. Let's 
see. Take a wide brush. Pretty much we just want to get all that liquid off. Don't like it. But it does give me an idea stay tuned so we're gonna take the powder with a very wide brush we're gonna powder in various spots Create that haphazard look. What's happening all over the place? Okay, I'm gonna take it out of this. We'll see how it went. Let's keep our fingers crossed. So, as you can see, there's some, it's not smooth. And I can probably say that that's from all the heat from the light, because I have two lights on this cake. But also, I kind of like that it's texturized. And I'll clean up the top and I'll put it in the freezer. And I'm going to do one scrape after I put it in the freezer. We'll see what happens. But I do like that I can do the design all at once instead of having to do a few. So I'm going to use this on other cakes outside of the Frost Foam system. Just because I want to. So we tried it again. Let's see how it looks without using the whole thing. So this is just using it the traditional way, wrapping and refrosting, which I kind of like. It gives it a rustic look. But I did use, because I'm making content cake, I use Crisco. I'm thinking when I use buttercream and it has an easier way to freeze 
because I'm finding that the Crisco, this was in the refrigerator for 45 minutes. Still, it's tacky. So, I also need to check the setting of my freezer. <laughs> Might be too many things in there. But I wanted you to see the texture. Which we're going to fix by just decorating. So what, you can use these without the whole frost foam system where you put it in there and you wrap it in there. So I'm very happy about that. On with the decorating. And after some time of embellishment, we have silk flowers galore. Not too shabby, not too shabby. end you can always fix things but I guess for me I'm sticking to the plates this is a lot of work and I don't intend to spend all that time figuring out how to make it go faster just a personal preference I'm going to stick with the plates it's a great concept if you're a home baker and you want to figure it out personally plates for me this was fun. It's a good lesson. And I also still got introduced to very nice big stencils. Which, by the way, I'm going to snip the end off because I don't need it. Because I'm not going to be putting it in the former. And we'll see how it goes. All right, loaded buds. Hope you enjoyed the journey. Stay sweet.